Hello, Somerset. Uh, we are here at Montemidai High School over in Minnesota, and we are currently in their fab lab. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Um, so what we're here to do is that Somerset may be getting one of these, and we have the opportunity to do so, but we need your feedback and support to do this. This video is going to be kind of showing you the parts of a fab lab, what it can do, the potential of it, and how we might use this in our own school. So, listen up and we'll see you in a bit. We do cool stuff. One of the first parts of the fab lab we got to see were the 3D printers. They work by using programs such as SolidWorks that Scordy has. So we can already kind of work with them, but they create a digital object and then send to the printer, and the printer will create this object by using heated plastic filament to create the object layer by layer. At Matamidai, they had several of these, but they also had a scanner that was attached to an iPad. You could scan a person, then they could clean it up on a computer, send it to the 3D printer, and print it like this one is currently being printed. Uh, this is kind of an example of a finished one. We also got to see a chess set that a student made but the pieces were made of a 3D printed model of his friends, which is pretty cool. And it's just kind of an introductory project that they used at Matamidai to introduce them to scanning and designing and creating something with 3D printers. So this is another 3D printer that we saw. It's called an SLA printer. And it works by taking a liquid resin, curing it with lasers, and then building it layer by layer in that form. Um, it creates a more detailed and stronger print than the extruder prints, but however, the resin costs a bit more than the plastic filament does. Uh, our tour guide was telling us about how they can use this for reverse engineering. Like one student, he took a lacrosse head, he measured it, he reverse engineered it, programmed it, and then he reprinted it. It was actually pretty strong and it looked really accurate and cool. Um, there's also a student who made a miniature Eiffel Tower as well as a Han Solo frozen carbonite. It was pretty cool and it's just another way to use 3D printing technology. Another part of the Fab Lab was their vinyl cutter and this is where a student would create a design on a computer and send it to the vinyl cutter and it would cut out pieces of colored vinyl and this way they could create stickers or even t-shirt irons on which kind of brings us to the next piece. The t-shirt and hat press where they could take something that they made on the vinyl cutter and they could press it onto a t-shirt we actually got to watch one student named Zach from Automedi, and he was making a t-shirt for his dad. But we have the same potential if we were to get the Fab Lab and all the parts that we could make a t-shirt in, say, like one of the art classes, and then the entrepreneurship class could sell a t-shirt in the school store. So that was just a really cool idea, and just one of the many things that could come out of getting a Fab Lab. So there you can see Zach, he's just peeling it away, just going to town, and he's there's his t-shirt. The next part was the laser cutters, and they would use that. They would start off with a piece of cardboard. They would cut out their design. As you can see, like they made a dragon, hot air balloon. Uh, the student we were watching, she was making her last name three-dimensional cardboard. And then they could also use it with acrylic, just a colored piece of plastic. And so the cardboard acts as their draft, and the acrylic would be their kind of final copy. And as you can see on the chessboard, that's all one piece of acrylic there. But the student, he just lasered the squares, so kind of discolored it to create the squares for the chessboard. The next part we got to see were the milling machines, which work similar to a 3D printer, but instead of building an object up, they mill it away. They would use insulation, but you can also use wood to create kind of, as you can see, like the M or the Eiffel Tower. Just kind of a cool another way to create objects. The other part of the Fab Lab was the shop part of it, which is kind of a combination of our woods and metal shop. But the biggest part was the shop bot, which you program a design into it and it'll go along and cut it out. So as you can see, here's a group of students who are making a wooden sign out of it. Uh, there's also another CNC machine, but this one works for metal. So instead of cutting into a piece of metal, however, it kind of cuts a piece out, which would be a really cool addition to the metal shop.
Mr. Olson on their thoughts of the Fab Lab and how we could maybe use it at Summers. So we just toured the Matamia Fab Lab, so we're talking to Mr. Olson, kind of his thoughts on how we could use it at Somerset. Well, I think if you see in the video, you'll see a lot of the interesting um, components and parts and tools that we can use. What I'm really excited about is that we can use, I think it'll grab a wider audience into our tech ed area and it'll bring people from the art from different aspects and not just the traditional um, technology um, students that are coming in. I don't think it'll be a wider uh, gamut, bring it, be able to bring, have, our, have a place that our whole school can use. Um, you can make cool things like this for uh, soccer teams. <laughs> and it'll be real great for everyone. It'll just make us have better school spirit. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential that we can use across all of the schools. So we highly recommend it. We got to see it. It was really cool. So we hope that you guys think it's just as cool, and we hope that we can make this Fab Lab a reality.